Here are some quick notes on photon diffusion time to accompany chapter three of To Build a Star. So the book gives some somewhat fancier um, lines of argumentation for what the photon diffusion time scale is. I just want to give something that's a little bit more hand wavy, but a little bit simpler here. So if our photon streamed you know, straight out of the sun, the time that it would take for the photon to leave the sun would just be given by the radius divided by the speed of light. So right, it'd just be a couple seconds for that photon to come out. However, uh, you calculated in the homework that the mean free path uh, of our photon, so you can calculate it with, um, with Thomson scattering cross-section and just a simple estimate for the constant density of the sun. And in that case, you find the mean free path is about a centimeter for that simple estimate. And so you know the photon's gonna have to random walk its way out of the star. If it can only go one centimeter at a time, and it has you know seven times ten to the eight meters to go, then the path that it's going to take looks something like the picture over here. Right, your photon's going to scatter off of many different um, uh, electrons, and finally, ultimately, it'll make its way out. Okay. So in the next uh, quick notes on random walk, you'll see that the distance that you travel uh, after n steps in a random walk is just the mean free path of your uh, each step size times the square root of the number of steps. Okay, so then to get to the surface, that means that you're gonna to have to travel, that, that random walk distance is gonna to have to be equal to the radius of the, the sun in this example. Okay, the diffusion time, that's gonna be the total photon travel time. So your photon travel time is the number of steps that you take times the length of each step divided by the speed that you're taking each step at uh, we just found how to equate the number of steps to the radius and the mean free path. So that's going to be radius of the sun squared uh, divided by the mean free path squared. And you multiply that by your mean free path over the speed of light. And you get something that's about uh, 5,000 years is your estimate for the photon diffusion time scale. You'll often see people write this as uh, 10 to the 4 to make it simpler. Uh, you know, whatever, around 5,000 years is your photon diffusion time scale from the simple estimate. And you'll find in the homework that with the more sophisticated line of argumentation, you get this exact same uh, result in the end for that photon diffusion time. Now, it turns out, though, you should be careful because really the mean free path in the sun is a lot less than one centimeter. Uh, it's, it's more like 0.1 centimeter is the average um, so here's the calculation. You have the mean free path as a function of the solar radius, and the average is something around 0.1 centimeters. And the reason that we're so far off from our simple estimate uh, that gives us one centimeter mean free path is for the simple estimate, we calculate the average density of the sun, which is about the density of water. It's a little bit greater than that. Whereas in the core, you're really way larger than that. <laughs> so. Uh, mean free path is much shorter. You have to take many more steps to get out of this central region. And so then your photon diffusion time, when you actually calculate it in a solar model um, to get to the surface, is really more like 200,000 years as opposed to that 5,000 years that we had. Uh, so that would be your actual photon diffusion time scale from a more sophisticated calculation. One aside here, a sort of cautionary tale, is this constant density model, we're using it in this class because it allows us to analytically solve problems in stellar astrophysics. It's very useful for giving us the rough scale of, uh, of certain you know, answers, I guess, of certain properties of your star. But don't take it too seriously, okay? It's not even really an order of magnitude estimate. It's more like a scaling, and this is a good example of that. So one thing I also want to point out is that the time scale uh, for the sun to adjust basically to changes in, in uh, the emission of photons near the core is not the photon diffusion time scale. It's actually the thermal time scale. So the, the reason is that you can compare the energy density from radiation uh, to the energy, en energy density of gas. So this is related to the uh, radiation pressure. This is related to the gas pressure. For a star like the sun, the radiation pressure is a lot less than the gas pressure. And you have to get to a very massive star until these things are even comparable. So because the radiation energy density is a lot less than the gas energy density, 
and, and we've covered these earlier, right? This is discussed in the black body radiation lecture. This is discussed in the virial equilibrium uh, quick notes. So because this radiation energy density is so much less, the photon energy is really just kind of a perturbation on top of the total energy. It's, it's not going to really strongly affect the total energy density. It's just a little perturbation there. And so really then that means that your photons are going to become in thermal equilibrium with the environment. So the energy from your photons, you basically convert that into kinetic energy uh, in the gas. And that kinetic energy then is what is radiated away. And we have previously solved the time scale for that kinetic energy to be radiated away from the sun. And that is the uh, Kelvin Helmholtz time scale. So the thermal time scale for your sun is actually Kelvin Helmholtz time scale. Okay. So let's again take an actual solar model um, with, with a bit of a kludge in it. So what we have here is the vertical axis is the uh, radial coordinate for the sun. And we're looking as a function of time at the luminosity, the radius, and the temperature for different mass zones. So you can discretize the sun into different mass zones. And we can look at the luminosity as a function of time for the inner mass zone, next one, next one, uh, until you're near the surface. And then same thing for the radial coordinate for that mass zone and the temperature. Okay. In this simple solar model here, it's, it's a real solar model, but the kludge is just arbitrarily increasing the nuclear energy as a step function by 2% at time zero. So it just jumps. And you can see how long does it take for your star here to go from an equilibrium condition where basically not much is changing as a function of time to get back to that equilibrium uh, time scale. And you can see that it's not anywhere close to that 200,000 years that we calculated for the, um, or that was calculated for the photon diffusion time. Instead, you're at something more like 10 to the seven years, right? Is when you get close to an equilibrium again. Uh, you know, for your luminosity as well as for your temperature. And that 10 to the 7 is what we calculated previously for the Kelvin Helmholtz time scale. So you can see that that is the relevant time scale for thermal adjustments in your star. So if something changes in the core in terms of energy generation, it's going to take quite a while for that to be communicated through the remainder of the star. And that is it for these quick notes on photon diffusion time.